What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more r slash entitled people, because I thought, why not? I feel like a bit of that today, so I thought we'd dive straight into it. If you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too, as it all really helps out this channel. And let's just crack straight on with today's stories. Much love, guys. Now, the first story comes from Alex Marino 794 My entitled father wants me to pay his debt after cutting me off five years ago. Some context here. Five years ago, when I was in my last year of university, my parents divorced. And for many reasons, which include my father being psychologically abusive, I decided to side with my mother and live with her. He was not happy with that, so he decided to ask for half the worth of our home, even though my mother bought it completely on her own. To not lose our home, I got three part-time jobs in the spare time while I was studying, and we could finally pay him his share and he left after destroying many things in our home. Yes, he stayed one year while the divorce was in the process. He just quit talking to me one day, got a new partner, and just left telling me that his stepsons were the kids he always wanted, instead of a geeky nerd, cause yes, I'm an IT engineer. He didn't stop there, as he also talked to all of his family, my grandparents, cousins, aunts, and uncles who also cut me off, without even knowing my side of the story. Once I graduated with the best score in my faculty, I got a scholarship for an MBA in Italy, which only covered the basics plus the tuition. So my mother helped me a lot since I couldn't work with my visa. Three years ago, I came back to my country and suddenly I got a great position in an international IT company. At the point in which I bought a car, a new apartment for us, and we've had a great life in general. Suddenly, he started to send me friend requests through Facebook, which I ignored and blocked his account. Yet he managed to get my phone number after I changed it and he started calling me, telling me he and his wife are starving and his stepsons couldn't find a job basically telling me I have to give him money and that he spent all of the share of the house which we gave him which was more than 50k, paying the university of his stepsons and his wife's lifestyle. I just told him I'm sorry but I won't do that. Now he started going to the reception of my apartment telling me that I owe him this and I have to be a better person, that he always loved me and I was the one who turned my back at him. All of his family, not mine at this point, started calling me as well telling me I owe him a great share of my incomes and I have to give him that or else they will sue me. That's bullshit. I again just told them to fuck off and that's not their business. The worst part of that was they came to my previous house which my mother still owns and broke every window telling me it was just the beginning of it if I don't hand him the money he wants. I just went to the police and got a restraining order. Yet some of my friends told me that I should forgive him and try to help him out as he is still my father. I'm 26 male, yet I cried all night, remembering how he just forgot me. All of his words, and now I honestly don't know what to do, as I could help him out without much effort. By this time, I'm feeling guilty of knowing he's possibly starving, yet he got a new family and he wants me to pay for them too. I really don't know what to do here, but I think I can't forgive him right now. Your friends that are questioning what you're doing is absolutely ridiculous and I don't blame you for the way you're acting in this situation. You're totally right. This guy isn't your father. This is just a sperm donor in this situation and he deserves nothing. He doesn't deserve to be a part of your life. And let's face it, we know why he's coming back to you. It's for money and that's it. What will he do once he gets that money? Is he going to stick around? I doubt it very much. And I hate to be an arse and say that, but it's probably the truth in this situation. Although I don't know 100%, but that's the feelings I'm getting here. But let's check out some of the comments to see what they say. My Pressure says he's lying about starving kids out of guilt and manipulate you. The crap weasels of the world rely on you being the bigger, better person because they get what they want out of you and the only cost to them is granting you a moment of moral superiority as you bask in your bigger slash betterness. To someone willing to steal hours or more of your life, meaning the hours spent earning that money, that's an easy bargain. Plus they get an ego boost because they're proud they tricked you. Eventually forgive him for your sake, not his, but it doesn't have to be today. And even if you do forgive him, that doesn't have to mean an ongoing relationship. Be kind to yourself. He never will. And Living Prince says, I get new friends too. Fuck this, he's your father BS. Blood doesn't mean family, especially since his stepsons are his real children and not OP. 
And PanPan90 says, no one can tell you what to do if they aren't who signed your paychecks at this point in life. However, I can tell you it's okay to cut off toxic family members. I've got no contact with my mother because she is selfish, mentally abusive bitch. Your sperm donor is still psychologically abusing you and he will keep doing it. Even if you help him, he'll only be nice to your face, but put you down behind your back to everyone. It's not your job to forgive him if he hasn't earned it. Just providing half the ingredients to make you isn't enough. If he really wants that kind of thing, he should have been a good father in the first place. Personally, I would consult a lawyer about what you need to do in order to get him and his family to back the fuck off and move on with their lives so you can move on with yours. If you have a doorman, see what you can do to have him and his family trespassed if you can. Help your mum get CCTV on the old house she owns if she's not going to sell it. That way, if they come back and destroy the property, you have it on video. And always press charges. If you let them get away with that stuff, they're just going to keep doing it because they think you won't do a damn thing. And now I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? And what do you think OP should do in it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And this next story comes from Bam Bam 1692 Entitled person gets embarrassed. This is a work story, but also an entitlement story. Back when I was 17, I used to work at a grocery chain that's pretty big in my area. It wasn't all too uncommon to have people who spoke different languages come through the store like Spanish, French, and Chinese. Most people don't bat an eye since I live on the East Coast of the United States, where multiple languages are commonly used to talk with families of foreign countries. One day, I had this younger lady, probably in her mid-30s, come to my register and start shit-talking about the couple behind her who seemed to be a little bit older than her, probably in their 50s, about the language they were speaking. That it should be a forbidden language because of the nation's history. Now, mind you, I obviously have never met this lady before, and me being from that area, I was appalled by her statement. I looked at the couple and listened to them, and they were speaking German. Fucking German. I turned to this lady and said to her, you should keep that opinion to yourself or you could end up offending someone who is part of that culture. To which she scoffs. I finish ringing up her order and she starts bagging her items. I greet the couple and start speaking to them in fluent German. The couple's eyes lit up with joy as I could tell they don't speak English very well. The look of utter embarrassment on the lady's face as she finished up packing and went to the desk was priceless. Later in the conversation with the couple, I learned that they were in fact German natives and were on a trip to see family in America. They didn't understand a good portion of what that lady was saying, but they knew it wasn't nice by her gestures and facial expressions. God, I love my grandmother to death for teaching me multiple languages at a young age. And it's one of those ones where I'd have loved to have been like a fly on the wall in that situation to just see her face, that expression suddenly change from sort of angry and smug to, oh shit. <laughs> well done to you, OP, for calling her out. Absolutely. But Square Bear says, it amazes me when people apologize for their English. They often speak two, three, or four languages. I can only speak English. Many people who whine about people's poor English just don't have the patience to listen to them. And Swiss El Rosso says, well made, and you have an amazing grandmother. To which Java Man says, here we go, I'm gonna try and butcher this one. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna try and butcher it, I'm just gonna give it a go. I'll get Seichnet. Sorry, my German viewers. When I was in high school, among the standard language class offerings were Japanese and German. My father yelled at me that he wouldn't allow me to take either of those because we fought a war with those people. Fortunately for me, he wasn't required to sign an approval, so I ended up taking five years of German in four years customized study plan. I never told my dad and he never asked me about it. Now, decades later, I wish I had chosen Spanish because I would like to retire to Latin America. And one more from Philbert57 saying, it always bothers me when people put down or berate people for speaking something besides English. Most of these people at least have a modicum of knowledge of English, if not fluency. I wish I could speak more than one language. I think these entitled idiots must be jealous. And our next story is from Lizzie B 66 My child, your money. I wrote yesterday about a coworker, CW, who refused to help me and my colleagues with a rotor days when she wrote the rotor, and here is another one about her. This coworker, CW, was a single parent with one child who had health issues. However, the kid was very active and tried not to let these issues affect their activities outside of school. In the two years that I worked with her, we'd be constantly told about how little Johnny's street dancing was going. 
every single day. Now, believe you me, I appreciate that people love their kids, but the only topic we could listen to in her presence was how fantastic her kid was. About 18 months into working with her, she announces that the kids' dance troupe had won a national competition and were going to some European country to compete. We all nodded approval and tried to get on with our work. She comes in one day with a wadge of paper and announces that kid has to raise money in order to go on this trip for the competition and each family had been tasked with raising X amount of money. Now, I appreciate that when I was a kid, if you couldn't afford to do something, you didn't do it. Raising money from family and friends is a way to make activities accessible to kids who are of lower incomes. However, if you are living on limited income, it's likely that your friends and family are limited too. Also, if the only people you socialize with are the people in your activity who are all trying to get money to go on the trip, then your pool of people to raise money from becomes limited. Thing is, anyone else in the office who'd been doing anything with their kids or family or raising money for charity and she'd been sworn off from supporting them because she either had her chosen charities or had to think of Kid because she was on a limited income. Well, CW announced Kid was having a dance off that would be sponsored and she needed us to donate so Kid and her could go on this trip. Now, the trip was going to be flying out to an Eastern European country, staying in the hotel and the competition. Okay, you think not too bad. The competition is three days. But no, there is more. They are making a holiday of it, so they need money for five nights and also to cover food, travel to the airport, spending money. And by this point, most of us had switched off. We were going to be paying for her and her son's holiday. She needed 2K. There were eight of us in the office. One of my coworkers asked how much she had raised from friends and family and CW told us that she had nothing as they couldn't afford it and all of her friends were in the same position trying to raise 2K each. So she goes up to our boss and puts a form in front of her and asks how much she is going to sponsor her kid for. Boss says 30 pounds, fills out the form. Then she works around the group and we all put down 10 pounds. Then she goes off to the other offices in the building to get them all to sign up. One of my co-workers commented that between us, she would at least got £100, which was 1 20th of what she was trying to raise, so that was a start. Now, the forms had all had sponsor per hour of the dance off, but each of us had written the sum we were sponsoring in the next column as max, so not £10 an hour, which would be £80, but £10 donation. She comes back two hours later, great use of time, looking really pleased with herself and without any prompting says she signed up enough people to nearly cover the whole amount. We think nothing of it. After all, if people who barely knew her wanted to sponsor her like that, then that was between them and her. For me, I was feeling like a bit of an ass to her because she was always a bitch over the rotors and I did a lot of voluntary work at my own expense as a way of giving back that I didn't make public but did eat up a chunk of my free money. I'd never met her son and had no real connection to her other than she worked in my office. Well, a couple of weeks later, the dance off is over. In she comes on the Monday morning looking all pleased with herself and tells us that we better have our wallets ready as they did more than eight hours than they had planned. They went back the next day and did another eight hours. Now, I have an issue with people doing things like that because if you have a budgeted to sponsor X and now it is two times, then that's a bit of emotional blackmail but we had all put a maximum on our donations and so wasn't our issue. She comes round with the sponsor sheets and goes to one of my coworkers, NCW, nice coworker who hands her a tenner. She laughs and just stands there looking at him. He looks at her, she looks at him. He looks at her still then says, okay, and turns back to his desk. She says, and the rest? To which he says, sorry? The rest, you owe another 150. Uh, no, I sponsored your son for £10 maximum donation. It's on the form. She says, no, you didn't. It was £10 an hour. No, here, let me see the form. CW tried to snatch it away, but one of my other co-workers, NCW2, comes up behind her and grabs it. NCW2 says, no, definitely says £10 max. In fact, we all wrote that except boss who wrote £30 max. We have all pulled out our £10 notes and boss has £30 in hand. CW says, that isn't good enough. You're being mean. How am I going to raise the money for our holiday if you don't pay? NCW2 really quietly says, you do what me and my wife do for our kids. You save up and go when you can afford it and don't expect other people to pay for you. She says, I'm a single mother. I need this. I had to go deliver some training. So I got up, put my tenor on her desk and shouted that it was there if she wanted it as I walked out the door. 
It seemed that it didn't go too well when I left. The rest of the office dug their heels in and said that they had offered money because she had put them on the spot. She insisted that we owed her because we'd misled her on how much we were giving. Turns out everyone else who had sponsored had averaged about three pounds max. She hadn't checked. Shortly afterwards, HR told us no more sponsorship or charity collecting in the office. We had to fight to be allowed to have poppies on sale and reception because of this. Actually, that probably increased our maliciousness in scheduling the rotors. I never understand how someone could be like that in the, in the workplace and have the audacity to try that bullshit, man. That really just pissed me off, to be quite honest. But let's check out some comments and see what they say. Living Prince says, She used that I'm a single mother, I need this. That infuriates me as a decent human and as a single mother. Just because we're fortunate enough to spawn a child doesn't mean we're entitled to anything, even if we, unfortunately, have to do it alone. Ugh, what a cow. <laughs> Musings of Apathy says, So the sponsorship was for a dance marathon. They did what they could one day, eight hours, and then decided let's do it again after 16 hours of good rest. They'll owe us twice as much. Like, what the fuck? That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. With that logic, why not a third day? Why not do it again the next weekend? Heck, after a few weeks, he might have built up some more endurance and he might be able to do nine or 10 hours a day. He'd build up to where he was taking their whole paychecks. Kid needs a car too. <laughs> and Tonks Looping says, it is kind of impressive how she's managed to ruin charity. ECP says, if the rotor maliciousness is blatant, complaints to HR would be warranted. We didn't accede to her extortion over that trip, so she refuses to accommodate time off requests, even within two months notice. And we finish off with Emperor Mitten saying, she's a peculiar variety of bitch. <laughs> and now I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? And how would you deal with it if that person came up to you and was saying this to you? <laughs> I'd love to know what you would do. Let me know in the comments below. And our next story comes from Visible Department 56, bought a company full of entitled employees. I-48 female, don't come from wealth. This has been a blessing that allows me to relate to people from different backgrounds. I'm a CEO of my own company, which started really small and grew gradually into a very healthy structure. I've given 22 years of my life to building the type of business that I wanted. I still have some road to walk. Two years ago, one of my partners and I came across a company whose owner was about to retire. We put our heads together and decided on the pros and cons of acquisition. First of all, I wanted to understand how the company worked, management-wise, and if our own working platform would benefit from it. This was before we even signed an NDA and got an insight on earnings before interest, etc. We agreed on just getting an appointment and pitching a project partnership. It would be a win-win situation, even if we didn't dive on the buyout. Initially, I was treated super nicely over the phone. We had our meeting, but it was a complete disaster. The company set us up for a meeting with department sub-managers. Three of them acted really professionally. The senior manager, Male61, was hostile. There was no discussion on buying the company because it was an internal strategy for us. He quizzed us, berated us, and raised his voice. I quickly identified that he's so used to treating his employees this way and this is how he works. I don't know if he felt threatened by something or if he just wanted to go on a power trip. There was one woman, female 56, who kept making disgust twisting her lip faces. To our surprise, the senior manager suddenly changed his tune, mellowed down and said he wanted the partnership. He even had his assistant, female 44, assign a date for full on meeting with our out of state project partners. We confirmed twice, called on everyone, accommodations were paid for and we exchanged emails towards the upcoming meeting. They cancelled the morning of the event. No apology and no reason at all. His assistant denied everything and said, we misunderstood, even when we brought up our long trail of email conversations. The assistant said, let me check with the senior manager and came back with, oh, he says maybe some other time. We were on full survival mode and were able to get a new venue and pulled a shotgun meeting with a willing and helpful company that has been very supportive since the beginning of my career. It all worked out. We tied down any loose ends and launched the partnership elsewhere. COVID hit last year and the company owner was more than motivated to sell. He was no longer insistent on the initial price and we never told him about the incident because we don't actually know if the people were his teacher's pets or would create any type of interference. The company was sold with all terms satisfied by June 2020. The entire staff was notified after the fact, and this is very normal. 
There was no grand entrance nor any miserly attitude on our side. Do you know when a bully is shitting in their pants? When they suddenly send you elaborate emails of goodwill and tell you they are elated by the company's new direction. We sat down with each director to hear their concerns and ideas. Nobody was wrecked into offering apologies. The only hard conversations that took place were with the lady making disgust gestures, who came in asking if she was going to get fired. No, we didn't, and the senior manager who first tried to suck up to us and attempted to exert dominance later, a desperate bid to retain his failing power. We thwarted their strategy in both cases by demanding they put their perceived grievances in writing. Crickets, nobody wants to admit to hostile meetings and stepping over boundaries in written communication. We changed most of the structure, cut down on happy spending by the staff and cut out their royalty treatment bullshit. We valued their expertise and know their long years on the job and turned them into sacred cows. But that was back then. This is now. Nobody got harassed, reminded their poor attitude or anything. We just took their untouchable status away. Nobody is indestructible. Some employees were let go, but we got new employees for areas that were just underperforming for a true lack of chain of command. Miss Twisting Mouth Lady's department was upgraded and automated. She only needs two people working for her, not six. We discovered that she was the senior manager's favorite ally and employee and had a tendency to mirror his attitudes to gain his approval, hence the mouth twisting and unsavory actions. The senior manager kept this job, but he's no longer allowed to preach religious stuff or give stuff away to his church. We have a corporate responsibility program for that and any contributions need to be recorded. Nope, you can't just give your pastor our discarded lounge furniture. Nope, you can't rub your PhD in theology in everyone's faces. This shouldn't be your source of power. By the way, the past giveaways were never recorded and were verbally attested. We weren't interested in recovering it because it was years ago. I don't know how he feels about having to report to us, but that's his problem. Also, everyone is required to wear a uniform. We don't need a fashion runway on weekdays. Nobody gets to show off their expensive suits unless on a casual day. So far, we are functioning, but have been effective at disabling their power trips. We never fired them because part of what was going on came from the previous owner not paying attention to these details. He's maybe 87 years old and delegated too much on them. The formerly conceited staff know they can leave if they are challenged to act sensibly, but good luck starting over. Wow, what a professional way to deal with things and just of taking their power away as well. I'd love to know what goes on behind closed doors when they're whispering in the shadows because there's no doubt they're still doing that. But wow, what do you guys think of this one? Let me know in the comments below. Now, once again, guys, thank you for being here today. I hope you did enjoy today's stories. And if you did, you know what to do. Hit that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too, as it's truly, truly helpful to this channel. It really, really is. And if you want to support the channel further, you absolutely can, but never any pressure to do so by clicking that join button down below for YouTube or clicking the link in the description and joining through Patreon. It is all super helpful. Thank you so much for doing so. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.